Larry, what would you say if I told you that one day light could actually be controlled by sound? Uh, I'd say that you must be in the Cubit Lab. The interaction of electrons with periodically ordered crystals plays a key role in our daily lives. Modern microelectric devices, such as smartphones and laptops, use semiconductors that are based on this interaction. Because of the periodic behavior of matter at the atomic scale, crystals have forbidden energy bands or band gaps, which deny certain electrons with energy in that band to enter the crystal. Think of the energy band gaps like bounces, keeping the riff-raff electrons out of the swinging crystal party. The possibility to build semiconductors with different values of that energy band, that is, with different bouncers stopping different waves, permitted scientists to implement light-emitting diodes, LEDs, with different colors, which are found in modern TV sets everywhere. For light, made up of photons, the periodic structures are called photonic crystals. And these structures already exist in nature. They're responsible for the iridescence of certain colorful creatures, from beetles to birds to butterflies. Not only do they occur naturally, but we've also learned how to engineer their properties, using photonic crystals to steer light through abrupt bends and confine it in ultra-small volumes. The acoustic waves of sound, or phonons, can also be controlled by periodic structures called phononic crystals. Scientists are currently using phononic band gaps to develop devices that attenuate the sound of traffic. Too bad they can't attenuate the sound of your karaoke singing. Am I right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Until now, the interactions of electrons, photons and phonons with periodic structures have been considered independently. Now what would happen if a crystal were periodically structured with two or more of these particles simultaneously? Since the electron wavelength is in the sub-nanometer scale, which is far smaller than the typical wavelength of light and sound, it becomes difficult to make electrons interact with photons or phonons in this way. However, light and sound come in a variety of speeds and different wavelengths. Infrared photons and gigahertz phonons Specifically, both present a wavelength in the order of one micron. So if the matter is structured with a micrometric scale, that is, if we tell the bouncer to let in only micrometric wavelengths, it is feasible to control photons and phonons, light and sound, within the same medium. The merging of photonic and phononic crystals yields a new concept, foxonic crystals. Now this is the main idea behind Tailfox, a new project out of Europe. So what sort of possibilities are there for these fancy foxonic crystals? For one, they should allow for the delaying and storing of light pulses. If we get a way to store photons and release them at our will, we have the key to the next technological revolution. It would be a breakthrough similar to the discovery of the transistor. A tight control on the delay of light could be a key step to the development of optical devices used in high-speed optical fiber networks. We can also imagine dual sensors that make use of data drawn from photons and phonons simultaneously, bringing us a new understanding of matter behavior on the micro scale. But, perhaps most exciting, through the creation of cavities for light and sound, foxonic crystals can gain us unprecedented access to quantum physics, revealing new surprises that we cannot even imagine. Indeed, this is only the beginning. And that beginning is the end for now. I'm Larissa. And I'm Larry. And we'll see you next time. here to stop the karaoke. Oh. Okay. I think it's better for everyone. <laughs> <laughs>